So now let's use substitution method, but with definite integrals. Which really, it's evaluating is going to be the same as before with definite integrals in terms of plugging in, but we'll get some extra practice with our substitution method for how to get to that point. So with this one, what I'm going to recognize is that this looks like a composite function. We have this inside function of 3x minus 1, outside function of this exponent of 4. So what I'm going to do is make a substitution for that 3x minus 1. I'm just going to call that u. So u equals 3x minus 1. Taking the derivative, so du equals 3dx. And in terms of making the substitution for dx, we have that part, but we have this extra 3. So when we substitute for du, what I want to do is multiply by a third. So we can make the substitution of just 1 third times du is equal to just dx. So making our substitution, so we're taking the integral from 0 to 1 of, and for 3x minus 1, we're going to substitute u in, and then we have this exponent of 4. And then to have where we have dx, we're going to have 1 third du. So to help out, I'm just going to have that 1 third come out front, and then antiderivative from 0 to 1 u to the fourth du. So then what we'll have here is one third times, and then in parentheses, I'm going to have u to the fifth over five. So taking the antiderivative, we don't need plus c here since this is a definite integral. So u to the fifth over five, evaluating from zero to one. Now, what's important here is that zero and one, those are x values, and if it even helps, where I just wrote 0 and 1, really it's x equals 0, x equals 1. So we don't want to substitute in yet. We don't want to substitute in 1 and then subtract substituting in 0 because our variable is u. It is an x. So before we can evaluate the definite integral, we need to replace u. So u is equivalent to 3x minus 1. So what we have here is 1 third times and then in parentheses 3x minus 1 to the fifth power over 5 and now we're just evaluating from 0 to 1 and we could substitute in for x. So what I'll have here is 1 third and then for substitution we'll have 3 times 1 3 times 1 minus 1 to the fifth power over 5, and then subtracting 3 times 0 minus 1 to the fifth power over 5. And you could simplify by hand here, but really it's just about getting a single value out. So if you want to jump to the calculator at this point, that's completely fine. We just kind of want to see how things are substituting in. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the calculator at this point. So we have this one third on the outside, and then in parentheses, then we have a three minus one to the fifth power, so two to the fifth, divided by five, minus negative one to the fifth, so a negative one over five, and that's a 2.2. .2. And if you want the fraction, you could convert to 11 fifths. And that would do it. So what that's doing, again, is it's finding the area under the curve. So it's finding the area under this 3x minus 1 to the fourth power between 0 and 1. And we could even check that with a graph a bit. If we wanted to graph that function and get an idea of what that function looks like. So in parentheses, 3x minus 1 to the fourth power. And we're looking between 0 and 1. So it's making sense that we're getting a positive value out since we're above the x-axis there. And 0 to 1, we have this little sliver plus this larger sliver. And what we got about 2.2, .2. Eh, that's looking about right there.
looking about correct, between those two and area under the curve. A little hard to visualize, but can give you a rough idea if you're on the right track. All right, let's go through a few more here. So we're looking from two to four, and we have the natural log of x to the fourth power divided by x. So what we'll have here is the inside function will be that natural log of x since it's trapped under that exponent of four. So let's let u equal natural log of x. If we take the derivative, that's gonna be one over x dx. And that's looking like a really nice setup because there's our x in the denominator, dx, so we don't need to do anything special to adjust du here. So we're gonna have the antiderivative from two to four. We're gonna have u to the fourth power du. So we're getting all of our substitution, natural log of x to the fourth power, and then this divided by x times dx is being replaced with du. So we're evaluating u to the fifth over five. No plus c since this is definite. Evaluating from x equals two to x equals four. So before we can substitute those, we need to replace u. So this is going to be evaluating the natural log of x divided by five from two to four. So we're gonna have the natural log of four over five minus natural log of two over five. And we could leave it like that or we could get a decimal approximation if we wanted to, but that would get us to our answer. All right, I think we have two more here. Very similar setup here, natural log of x raised to the sixth power divided by six. So with this one, we're gonna let u equal natural log of x here, which means du is gonna be one over x dx. Now with this one, we're actually going to get stuck here because an issue is that when we're taking the derivative, we have x as part of our derivative, but x is not showing up in our integral. We just have natural log of x to the sixth power divided by six. So all we have is a constant down there. Up above, we were fine because we had x in the denominator, which was perfect. So like if we took our same steps of like, say I wanted, I need a six in the denominator, I need to get rid of that x, it would be like multiplying both sides by x over six. So having x over six du equaling one sixth dx. That's fine for making a substitution, but x is part of our substitution. So when we go to take the antiderivative, we're going to run into issues. So I wanted to point this one out because this is a case where we would be stuck and at least using the substitution method and any other method up to this point, um, we wouldn't be able to. But something we're going to talk about in the next video is integration by parts. And what we could do is revisit this one and use that integration by parts. But so far, in terms of using substitution method, it's not going to work for this one. So there isn't a way of evaluating that antiderivative, evaluating that definite integral. We can always go to the idea of area under the curve, but in terms of what we're accomplishing in this section, too early to do that. But I wanted to bring up this idea of if you're doing substitution method and you end up with x as part of your du portion and making the substitution, it's not gonna work. When we make the substitution, everything should be in terms of u and du. All right, our last piece one here is x times the square root of one minus x squared. So let's let u equal one minus x squared. So du is gonna be a negative two x dx. So let's see, we can substitute in for the one minus x squared. And then we're seeing an x dx. So we need to get rid of that negative two. So I can do is multiply both sides by a one over negative two, one over negative two. So I have a negative one half du equals, 
just x dx, which is perfect. So we're evaluating from 0 to 1, and then we're going to have the square root of u, which is u to the 1 half power, and then times a negative 1 half du. So I'm just going to rearrange this, so I'm going to have the negative 1 half on the outside, antiderivative from 0 to 1 of u to the 1 half du. So this is going to be a negative 1 half, and then the antiderivative is going to be u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Okay, and what we can do is we can really leave this messy because it is a matter of just plugging into the calculator and getting a number out. So let me show you how this would work if you want to kind of skip some simplifying steps. You can do that with this because it is just going to end up being calculator work. So we're going to have negative one half and then we're going to have, let's see, u is the equivalent of one minus x squared. So we're going to have one minus x squared to the three halves divided by three halves from zero to one. All right, so this is going to be a negative one half times plugging in zero, so that's one to the three halves divided by three halves. Hold on. Sorry, plug in one. <laughs> so one minus one is zero, so zero to the three halves, so that's just going to turn into a zero. Minus plugging in zero, one minus zero, so that's one to the three halves. Okay, this isn't too messy, so. We're fine. So this is just going to be 0 minus 2 thirds, so a negative 1 half times negative 2 thirds. So that'll be a positive 1 third. Um, sorry, I know I said I was going to plug it in messy into the calculator, but this ended up being pretty nice to simplify with the zeros and ones. But what you could do is leave it exactly like this and just throw it into the calculator 1, 0, and check it out. Okay, so that's substitution method with our definite integrals. You should be ending up with just a number at the end because it's an area under the curve.